Hey, my name is Dan McMurray and I am a drummer. Um, I'm Australian currently living in Los Angeles and I've been here for about a year and it's awesome. Um, I started playing music really young. I think I was three when I got given my first pair of drumsticks and I just hit everything, my toy boxes, the pots and the pans, the pillows. And, um, and then when I was six, uh, I went to a pretty small church and the drummer didn't show up one morning and before the service started I was kind of just sitting at the drum kit playing with my hands and like I think a pen I think I found like a blue pen and I was playing with that and I could barely reach the pedals um, but then church kind of just started and the key keyboard player at the time was like just stay on the drum kit you know may as well have fun and then the drummer never showed up again. He kind of left town, which is funny. So um, every week, pretty much from that day, I was playing drums um, in church. So nothing really ever changed. Yeah, that's how I got started. And um, yeah, um, I'm currently playing with Lauren Daigle, which is really cool. Uh, I've been with her for about four months, five months now. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a really good group of people. She's great. Um, super talented. I got that gig uh, because I was on a tour called Outcry, drumming with Hillsong Worship, um, which is the church I go to and kind of my background, I guess. Um, and Austin Davis, who drums for Kerry Job, was also on that tour. And he had been drumming for Lauren and kind of um, schedule stuff was clashing so he couldn't do both and he basically just put my name forward and said you should use Dan and so that's how that happened so it was pretty cool um, yeah I was on one tour and just through people on that tour I got connected with Lauren and yeah it's been it's been great uh, my responsibilities on the road with Lauren are pretty minimal um, our keys player Todd who's also the MD launches tracks so I don't really have anything to do with tracks which is nice it's different you know but I'm always willing to do whatever it takes I think probably the, my main responsibilities would be on the night during the the shows um, drumming there's a few moments when Lauren likes to just flow so Todd usually just throws to me and lets me lead it um, obviously holding so much dynamic I can kind of lead the band pretty well and I follow Lauren pretty well so that's probably my main responsibility is the nights just drumming and um, yeah, it's kind of nice, to be honest. It's it's cool to like, kind of have that clear mind to just focus on what's in front of me. Um, some of my influences. Uh, drumming influences. I think definitely I'd say John Bonham from Led Zeppelin. Just what he's done for rock drumming, rock music in general, um, is pretty crazy. I, I found that I was influenced by him before I even listened to Led Zeppelin, which is funny, but a lot of the things I had learnt just through whatever listening to music getting lessons seeing other drummers drum a lot of the things I'd learnt he had actually kind of been the pioneer of which I think is a really cool legacy so um, and then obviously once I listened to Zeppelin a bit more um, definitely got more influenced by him uh, Buddy Rich which I would say kind of flows from the same line just a bit earlier you know like all the rudiments around the kit and snare work and fills and stuff like that. Um, John Theodore is one of my favorites. Um, Ilan Rubin is a kind of a pretty cool drummer just for modern stuff, which I, you know, I kind of relate to the way he plays. Um, and then Steve Jordan, obviously for some groove stuff, so many influences, like I couldn't list them, but yeah, those are just some that come to mind. Um, a few of my favorite pieces of gear, uh, I love my cymbals. I play dream cymbals and I just love how they're made. I love how they sound. I love how they feel to play. Um, they just feel natural and I like that. I really like how warm they are. They kind of sit at a really good um, space sonically. Um, they're not overpowering. They don't sit too high so they're not getting in too many vocal mics but they're also feel a lot of space. Or they feel a lot of sound so I love that. Um, I love my snare. My snare's actually kind of one of a kind. Um, I had a friend in Sydney who was a carpenter 
like he would build houses and for fun he was also a drummer for fun he would make some snares and he wanted to kind of start a, a company and he did for a little while he only made a few snares but um time kind of got the better of him and he kind of stopped doing that but it's a 14 by six and a half australian jarrah block shell drum um so it's really solid super solid um and i i use maple hoops around the on the top and the bottom so it's kind of unique it's not like perf perfectly made you know it's not made by machine by machine it's handmade so it's kind of got a few quirks of its own but i love that and it sounds cool and yeah i, I really like that piece um gear that's on my wish list i really would like to get an acrylic snare i have a few friends that use them and they just have a sound of their own um, and I think it's good to have some diversity because I mainly just play that wood snare. So I think I would like to get an acrylic snare. They have a really big sound, just especially for deeper snares. I kind of love the way they just, uh, they sound and kind of, you know, I don't know. I just love it. Um, advice that I would give someone who wants to do what I do. Um, I kind of was always told that character is probably the most important thing my dad um, worked a bunch in the industry and he said that they would often hire people that could do the job well but were really good people to work with and really good people over the guy that could do the job the best but wasn't the best to work with it wasn't a great person so I'd say character I think that like staying humble being really easygoing um, always kind of biting your tongue if you want to get in an argument or something I don't know I'm not really much of an arguer so that's easy in that sense but I just think character and then ability you know obviously I think you still want to be skilled you still want to be um, always pursuing your best and being great at what you do but um, it's it can be really frustrating especially when you're touring and you're living with these people and you're on the road with them for weeks and weeks um, you, you become family and so if you are a difficult person or if you um, are a bit hard to hang around then it gets felt by everyone so I'd definitely say character and then ability and just being diligent with your craft and doing the best you can with it what do I wish someone told me before I got started probably don't let life get in the way of continually practicing i used to practice heaps in high school um like you know the classic get home from school and play for six hours that was me for years and then as i moved away from home moved to sydney i was living in an apartment so i couldn't drum because it was too loud there was a lot of thudding even on an electric kit there was a lot of thudding so and then it kind of just discouraged me i didn't really do much Maybe every now and then on a practice pad or on some pillows I would play. But, you know, um, and then as life gets more and more busy, you kind of forget how important it is to maintain practice. And I think that if I was mentally prepared for that, as I got busier and got older, it would have been ingrained into me a bit more. Uh, but I also think it depends because some people I know have never not had a place to play drums. They've always been able to play in their garage or in their house. And that's awesome. But for those of you who find life getting to a point where you it's not as accessible i think it's still important to maintain a schedule or somehow some way of practicing um how do i learn new material well it's kind of funny because a similar thing it's hard to just jump on a kit um all the time sometimes i'm in a place where i can just run down to a rehearsal space or i have a kit set up somewhere that's awesome but to be honest a lot of the time i don't so i'm much of a um, listener anyway like I learned things just through my ear um, notating and charts and stuff kind of confuse me that's just the way my brain works so um, I listen and my brain I kind of my brain tells my body how to play what I'm listening to um, sometimes I find it helps to just tap my legs and my hands so I'll at least know the coordination of things but I just listen things over and over again so it's ingrained into my brain so it's not like I have to go oh what's coming up next is it a verse or is it a chorus or whatever like I know the arrangement back to front it's just more remembering the parts 
I, I think of things in pictures. Like I, I don't know, the verse looks like something to me and, you know, the chorus looks like another thing to me. So really when a whole song should only have like four or five pictures if it's a basic song, you know, um, everything's numbers, you know, um, I don't know. It's hard to explain how my brain works sometimes, but yeah, def definitely a mental thing. And then making sure my brain knows how to play those things. That's kind of a lot of the times how I have to learn new material, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you can play, if you can practice, do it, get it out physically before you actually have to play it. And then what's some regimens, exercises I'd recommend to get better? Well, look like, I don't think there's many people out there that wouldn't say rudiments, like singles, doubles, paradiddles, all of them. They're super important, um, always. Like still to this day, I try and do those. Um, they'll, they'll always get you better. You'll always improve if you keep practicing those things. I'd say anything that moves around the kit, anything that gets you moving so you understand your kit a bit, a bit more, a bit more comfortably, anything that makes you twist and turn and basically... Yeah, like that motion, I think is important. And then I would say like something that I find is really important for me is actually um, just playing, just letting myself play and flow. Um, sometimes for an hour, for two hours, but just solo or play beats or just sh do whatever I can. Because I find that, especially in a worship context, there's a lot of times you do things that aren't planned and aren't rehearsed and sometimes you play things you've never played before or thought of and I think that the, in those moments it's really important to not be thinking like always be focusing but to not go oh I'm going to try this drum beat in this next drum chorus that I've been practicing sometimes that's great but also it can I find it can be better to just flow to just let whatever comes out come out because I find that God can really use that and you never get restricted to a structure or one idea so I think in worship environment it's good to just be able to know your kit know what you do but just be able to flow and do it strong do it confidently um, you know you don't have to solo but sometimes practicing just soloing can really help you get a sense of um, like kind of consistency around the kit not stopping and starting all the time and yeah, I, d I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think like the rudiments and all of that stuff first and foremost, and then just letting yourself be free and play. And I think it gets overlooked a lot of the time and just being able to flow and do whatever comes to mind is cool. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that.